Rory Burns led a Surrey fight back on the second day of his side's LV County Championship match with Essex in Colchester, when Monty Panassar returned to the sport in style. All eyes were on Mark Patini at the start of the second morning as he looked to add to his very impressive 107 made on day one, which had seen his team to a score of 323 for seven. 20 more had been added to that when Aaron Nidjar gave Zafar Ansari his fourth wicket of the innings. Burns soon involved with a catch at short leg that had the batsman on his way for 20. Ansari was in business in his next over too. A simple return catch offered by Jamie Porter, giving the bowler the fifth five-wicket haul of his career. That brought in Panasar, recalled to the Essex team after Ravi Patel was asked to return from a lone spell by Middlesex. Out of the game, sorting himself out, the former England man now returned and entertained the crowd. He'd made 11 off only four balls when the wicket of Patini for 134 brought an end to the innings. Tom Curran with the LBW that had Essex all out for 369 and Sari with five for 108. And Sari was then out to open the batting with Burns who was soon looking in fine fettle as he dominated an opening partnership of 23. And Sari had made just six of those when he edged Porter to Patini. That brought in Aaron Haranath, who played very brightly from the off, reeling off some lovely boundary shots as he soon moved ahead of Burns, the two left-handers settling things down for their side as they put on an additional 49 runs in 13 overs, Haranath contributing 34 of those runs of 45 deliveries. Panasar had to wait until his seventh over for his first wicket, Haranath's attacking policy bringing about his downfall as he sliced a hit to Porter in the deep. Into a long spell in the afternoon, Panasar also got one through Stephen Davis to bowl him for 16 at 106 for 3, the batsman with a bad misjudgment. That total became 112 for 4 as the left arm spinner struck again in his next over to get rid of Jason Roy, who was stumped by James Foster, the ball after Burns had completed his 50 of 89 balls. Burns' innings was now the key one for his team and he didn't disappoint. On a pitch which was clearly offering the slow bowler something, the left-hander showed a lot of skill and patience in waiting for the bad ball to hit. When it came, he rarely missed out. He received some good support from Gary Wilson, who stuck it out for 45 minutes in making 37 of a stand for the fifth wicket of 75 before being trapped in front by Porter. Surrey heading off to tee on 194 for five, 175 runs behind, with Burns there on a battling 87. Into the evening session, Panasar continued to toil, Burns sending him to the rope again to complete his eighth first class 100, which arrived off his 170th delivery. Batting in conditions such as these always offer a test for a batsman, but the talented 24-year-old had overcome all that was thrown at him, and he wasn't finished yet either. He'd carried the total to 222 when Surrey lost their sixth wicket. Nidjar with his fifth first-class wicket in his fifth game, as Foster once again showed off his skills behind the stumps to remove James Burke for 17. No visiting batsman except Burns made a score of note, which made the opener's innings really stand out. Panasar finally came out of the attack and his replacement Tom Wesley struck in the first over of his spell. Gareth Batty bowled for 20 at 284 for 7. A 20th boundary then had Burns at his 150. Foster deciding against switching immediately to the new ball. The batsman had by now faced 225 deliveries, batting through 81 overs thus far to keep his side in contention. He ended the day on 157, he scoring more than half of his team's runs. Surrey finished on 301 for 7 and with Burns still there, they'll go again on the penultimate morning, trailing by 68 runs.